A winter haze reflects a gentle view. Bubbling brooks meander through ice-covered limbs. I think there's a real sense of place. It's still a town where your neighbors come in and check on you. A place where a frozen moose pond hugs the ridges of a mountainous centerpiece. Just shy of three hours north of Boston, 35 miles west of Portland, you will find this tiny town. Bridgeton, Maine has a population of just over 5,000. That number bubbles over during the summer. People drawn here for the lakes and the hiking. But winter offers its own opportunity to get a closer look at the threads that make up this community. I love Bridgeton. There's downhill, cross country, ice fishing. Cindy Hooper owns the Noble House Inn. This former lawyer from Texas found her way to Bridgeton like many others. I just had this thought of, I want to be an innkeeper in Maine. I was here December 17th, 2012. Quit my job, crossed my fingers, sold everything I couldn't pack up, and here we are. The Noble House offers guests a homey feel, each room designed with antique furniture. But it is the breakfast. That's where you will find Hooper's passion shine through. Creme brulee, cream grapefruit to mouth-watering quiches. I love food. I can't eat all the food I love or I wouldn't be able to get through doors. So I get my joy serving other people food. A heart-filled home and a hearty meal to set you off on a day's adventure. A bridge to nature in the center of it all. Pondicherry Park. You know you have found it when you come across this unique covered bridge. Each one of these beams made from a different tree native to the state of Maine. Stevens Brook leads visitors through year-round trails, be it snowshoeing in the winter or hiking in the summer. At first glance, snow-covered Main Street looks a bit sleepy, but here you will find a mile of understated gems. The bright sign of the Rufus Porter Museum begs your attention and curiosity. Who is Rufus Porter? I feel that most people should know who he is, even though he's pretty much unknown. He did all kinds of incredible and wonderful things. Porter was a Massachusetts native, an artist and inventor who founded Scientific American, which is still in publication today. His father sent him to Freiburg Academy, which is right up the street from here in Bridgeton. Yeah. Lasted six months. He was like, I'm done, I can't do this. Um, so he went back home and his father's like, well, you have to do something with, it, with your life. So he sent him back to Massachusetts. Again, he said, nope, this is not for me. And he left and he actually walked from Boxford, Massachusetts to Portland, Maine. And that's where he learned to paint, he played the fiddle. But Carla Leandri Ryder, executive director of the museum, says what Porter lacked in focus, he made up in ingenuity, finding a true gift for folk art. He could paint the room of a parlor in five hours. I and mean, how he did it quickly was he utilized stencils, stencils from many of the buildings in his murals. He also used corn cobs to sort of get that effect in like a tree. Never one to take credit, he rarely signed his art, but he was known to share his knowledge freely. A stone's throw away from Porter's art, you will find a longtime staple, Bridgeton Books. Nearly three decades ago, at a time when big box stores were forcing small independent retailers out. Oh, yep, I did those too, yep. Pam and Justin Ward were cautioned about pursuing their dream. Yeah, it's just sort of gracefully gone in the right direction. I think people st still like their paper books. It's not fancy, but if you can get past the tight security provided by Luna, you will find a personal touch. People want a human contact. They want a person to suggest a book or to suggest a wine. They don't want an algorithm to do that. The store offers local authors a place to promote their books, small names like Stephen King. He has a place on Keyser Lake, which is nearby here, mm -hmm. and he comes in and shops here, and he's really been nice enough to to do a few book signings. When he says he wants to do a book signing, we, of course, say for yes. And, uh... <laughs> His presence inspires readers and often sales, but it is Bridgeton that has provided a backdrop for his creepy tales. On the right on High Street, there is a 
Victorian looking building okay. and that is the building that the vampires moved into in the book Salem's Lot. In the mist, a mist envelops this town and there's these people that are trapped in a grocery store, which is Food City. Food City also is in Under the Dome, which is one of a more recent book that he's written. Thankfully, this place is less about the fear and more about the love. And Justin says Stephen King always draws crowds, but it was Stephen's wife, Tabitha, herself an accomplished writer, who was the first to sign her pages at Bridgeton Books. And back to Rufus Porter, he is credited with one of the earliest prototypes that eventually led to the invention of the heart pump. We should note that in the winter, the museum is only open by appointment. Up next, this Bridgeton artist is at home in his studio.